Okay, we're going to talk about some sample problems from section 4.5, which is all about solving different types of exponential logarithmic equations. So um, these four examples I've got for you show kind of the four different um, ways that we can use this new skill. So the first way is um, if you have a base raised to an exponent, equals another base, maybe raised to an exponent as well, just not on this one, but it's saying 3 to what power is 5? Now there's no exact um, whole number answer to that, it doesn't come out even in other words, so it's actually going to be an irrational answer, which a lot of your answers you're seeing in this chapter have been irrational, So meaning there's long decimals, they never repeat, and they never terminate. So we're going to see that here, and you might kind of estimate what do you think this would be. 3 to the first would be 3, so that's too small, and 3 to the second would be 9, and that's too big. So we know it's somewhere between um, 3 to the first, x being 1, or 2, somewhere between 1 and 2. But how do you find that exactly? Nothing we've done up to this point would allow us to do that, none of our old algebra skills. So this is something new, and logarithms help us solve this type of equation. Actually, when you're solving for the exponent, that's in essence working a logarithm. That's what logarithms are kind of designed to do, is figure out the exponent. So what we can do is we can take the log of each side. So I can take the LOG log, the common log that is, or the LN log, the natural log. And it works either way. So you do whichever one on this that you feel like is absolutely the same answer. So sometimes I use LN just because it's smaller to write, but it does not, does not matter on this particular problem. So I write LN means I'm taking the logarithm of each side. And you know we, know we can do as long as we do the same thing to each side. Well, now what happens is now that we've written the word log there, we've enacted the log rules, which tell us that in a logarithm, a log raised to an exponent, sort of like an exponent raised to an exponent, and that and that, that exponent multiplier. So it brings that exponent down. That was in our properties of logs in our earlier section. Um, but anyway, anytime you have the word log, you've enacted the log rules. This is a logarithm. So a log raised to an exponent is like an exponent itself itself raised to an exponent, and from our exponent rules we know exponents to exponents multiply. So that kind of makes sense, you might think of it like that. But anyway, that exponent now comes down as a multiplier. X is multiplied onto ln of 3. And then once we get it all on the level, you might say it's all on kind of the same level now, there's no subscripts or superscripts. Um, we can do just our old algebra skills. ln of 3 is just a constant. We can get that off of our calculator, hit ln of 3 at any time. The only reason I might not want to do that intermittently is when I hit ln 3, I'm going to get an ugly decimal. You know, it's, it's, um, it is irrational, so it goes on and on and on. So if I'm going to avoid round off error, I really don't want to write all that decimal out here. So we usually just leave it intact and call it ln of 3 and move on and say, I know that is some number, 1.09ish, and I can divide that now on each side and get that to cancel for my variable, and that leaves x then solve for. What I do to one side, I'll do to the other side, so I'll divide by ln 3 here as well. Now then, I can get an exact calculation here of ln of 5 divided by ln of 3. All right, so let's do that. ln 5, notice I need to close my parenthesis, divided by ln 3, close that parenthesis and it's 1.46-ish. So it's best to wait to the final answer before you do any rounding, and your directions should say round to whatever decimal. Say it says round to the nearest tenth, it'd be 1.5. So I'm going to go with that. I'm not sure what your directions will say. You just have to, just have to watch that on each one. But about 1.5. Now you can check it out. Is 3 raised to the 0.5 power equal? We'll see. Um, 3 raised to, raised to the 1.5. I'm going to have a round off. Actually, that's quite a bit of round off error on that. So I probably need to round a little further out to um, a further decimal decimal point. Um, anyway, you get the idea. It is um, help, help us find that. Okay, so that's the first example. The second example is similar but a little more um, complicated exponents but the same concept. You're trying to find what variable, what value you need for that variable to make these two sides equal. Um, 
All right, so same idea. We've got these two bases. They're not like bases. You had a section, maybe in section two, where if you could make your bases the same base, you could just set the exponents equal. So if I could do that, I, that would still be a strategy, but that is not um, going to happen here. Five and four cannot be expressed as a like base. So I'll do the same trick I just did over there. I'll take the logarithm of each side. By taking the logarithm, that enacts the log rules, which says your exponents then come down as multipliers. So by taking the log, and it could have been the ln log or the log log, they're both logarithm rules, that brings that exponent, x plus two, I will put it in a parenthesis uh, to keep it intact, times ln of five equals this exponent to x minus 2 times ln of 4. And now once you get it down on the level, like I said, there's no superscripts or subscripts. Everything is on the, the line of our paper. They're all level there. Now we can use our old algebra rules, which would say this ln of 5, again, if you notice on your calculator, ln of 5, it's um, a constant ln of 5 equals about 1.609. But I don't want to write out 10 digits. And even if I wrote all 10 digits, I may still have round off error because it goes on and on and on, never repeating, never terminating. So I don't want to write that number right there. You can if you want to. If you do, make sure you keep up five or six decimal places and you'll probably be okay with your rounding. But um, anyway, typically if you view the example, it's um, recommended that you just call it ln of 5. And, but in your head, know that that's just a constant number around 1.6. So then we distribute that value. So we'll have x times ln of 5 and, and 2 ln of 5 yet to be multiplied. Again, we could find that, but we don't want to yet. Over here, I'm going to distribute that multiplication 2x times ln of 4 and minus 2 times ln of 4. All right, so this looks like a mess. We've got actually four terms. There's one, one term plus, that's the second term. Here's a third term, here's a fourth term. So, so it's just like algebra. You find if you can, you move your variables to one side. So same old, same old, we've done this before. Notice that these two terms have x's in them, so they're all variable terms. And then these two are constants. So we want the variables on one side and the constants on the other side. So I'm bringing this variable term to the left and this constant term, moving it to the right. We'll change the sign in front of those as we do so. So it'll be a minus 2x ln of 4 when we move this over. On the right side, we have a negative 2 ln of 4 already there, and then we bring the other constant over, making it a negative 2 ln of 5. Normally, if we just have x terms like 1x and 2x makes 3x, we just combine our x terms, but here these won't combine so easily. I could, like I said before, if I wanted to get those ugly decimals out of ln of 5, but I don't want to have round off errors, so I don't want to do that. But if this really bothers you, I could go ahead and write that as a value and then take ln of 4 and double it because you can multiply those two together and put the x at the end. You could make that into a number decimal and go ahead and combine it. But we don't recommend that because of the round off. So we factor out the x since x is in both of these terms and write all the values around that. Okay, so copying all that down. And now that we've got our x times all of our constant part separated out, we'll divide that to each side. So that cancels that, and we're about to solve for x. x equals, and then we have to do the same thing on this side. And then the trick is now making our calculator um, correlate with it. So type that in our calculator. So very carefully. So you've got to tell your calculator where the numerator starts and where the numerator ends and then where the denominator starts and ends. So you will need a big parenthesis around all the numerator to tell it that and then a big parenthesis around, around all the denominator. Well also you're going to have parenthesis. As soon as you hit the LN or log button it brings up a parenthesis. So you'll need to close that. Then you'll have a parenthesis around that five. So see, so see, you'll have a double to see in some in some places. In denominator, the same thing happens. When you hit your log button, you need to close the parenthesis to see that are logs. So that's what you're typing in. So we'll type that in. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. Parenthesis negative two ln four. Close that parenthesis. Then minus two. 
ln brings up an automatic parenthesis. I plug in my 5, close, close. Then hit divided by to do the denominator. Then you've got to open your parenthesis for the denominator. ln of 5, close, minus 2, ln of 4, close, close, equals. All right, so 5.15106, depending on what they say to round to, if they say four decimal places, the six would then round that up to a one. So do watch your rounding. All right, next example has the logarithm already in it, really the next two examples if we get to them on this video. Um, let's see if we can see that, get the other out of the way. All right, so this one already has the word log in it, and what we want to do is use our log rules to our advantage. We, we studied these log properties that said whenever you have addition, you can condense addition as multiplication in logs. Add and multiply kind of go together, and these are light-based logs. They're all base 10, since you don't see anything else listed there. It's understood to be a common log base 10. So we can say with light-based logs, when you're adding, that can be condensed to a multiplication. So we've got these, I don't even need to write the 10, I suppose. I've said that, those are just understood. But what we've done here now is we have a log problem. Um, it's one log on this side, just one log on log on that. And that's important because once you condense it down to just log and log, just like we took the log of each side to get our problem to work, to work and untag log of each side to help us. So if you, so if you condense it to log of one side, the left side equals log of the right side, right side, same base log, then you can just drop those out. So then we have an, have an equation, equation without logs. And now we're back to old algebra. How do we solve that equation? Um, we can distribute the x, makes it x squared squared is 20x equals 75, and we see we have a quadratic equation. So in quadratic equations, we make it equal to 0, and then either factor it or use the quadratic formula, whichever you prefer. This is factorable. It's x minus 25 times x plus 3. You can, oh no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> to think about that. So check that out. Multiply that by the FOIL method. And make sure. Then set each factor equal to zero. Then you can solve each part. You get positive 25 and negative 3. Now, after you solve these equations, you'll have to be careful, and we really should do this anyway. You should check and make sure your answers work in the original problem. So we plug this back in, say the negative 3, and that's the one I know is not going to work. If you hit on your calculator, if we hit log base 10, so regular log of negative 3, it gives me an error reading. Sorry, you couldn't see that. That's an error reading. So log of negative 3. Error. So that negative 3 is not going to work. Actually, the problem is you can't have a negative argument of the log. <coughs> if you try to hit log of a negative number, you are always going to get an error. So you can check, you should check these. 25 is going to be okay because 25 minus 22 makes that a positive 3. 25 for that x. We can type that in and it works. And this is how you check that on your calculator. We should do this. I'm kind of bad, lazy about checking my answers. But see how we can check back in for the x's? We can do log of 25, close your parenthesis, plus log of 25 minus 22, or 3. See what that side equals, 1.875. Okay, and then check the other side, log of 75. Notice it's exactly the same answer, so that shows me that value for x would make the equation equivalent and thus be a solution. All right, the fourth type of problem that you'll encounter in your homework is when it when it has one log in the problem. Sorry, clean that up. So we've got log on this on this, but not on this. one strategy would to be make both both sides have four in them. Sometimes that's a trick we can use, but um, in the, in the, the easiest way is get it out of log form. Write it as four four four. To the, that's what a log means. This is the base. That's the answer of the exponent. Four to the third equals the argument. So the meaning of that out of form into exponential form would look like this equation. And then it would be solvable. 4 to the third is 64. 
this side can be foiled together. And we've got a quadratic again. So you'll see those come up a lot in this chapter again. Uh, we get it in standard form by throwing the 64 across the line. What is that, 99? And then we either factor or use that formula to solve that. That's x plus 11, x minus 9 equals 0, giving us solutions of negative 11 and positive 9, which we'll then plug back in and see, make sure they work, just like I talked about in the other one. You want to make sure it doesn't give us a negative argument of the log. I'm thinking that negative 11 might just do that, so we might have to throw that answer out. The 9 looks okay, but again, check it and make sure.